I'm going to go to KCRA 3's Mike Tassell, who was there when they took a Brill into custody, right, Mike? Yeah, so I'm standing behind the Edgewood Apartments, that area where you can see uh, that Robin police are still here, and it's a green belt area. So you have the apartments here, the carport. This is where I drove up to as soon as I heard a word that he may be in custody, and as soon as I rounded the corner and saw this, right here is where all of the uh, activity was, the Placer County Sheriff's Department, SWAT team members, and of course the Rockland Police, all here, and they were focused on this area, as this is where uh, they, the, the, the green belt area, right behind uh, the apartments, this is where uh, all of the cars were parked, and then I caught up with it right as they had this uh, suspect being put uh, into uh, the Placer County Sheriff's vehicle. But you can see uh, behind me just how wooded and uh, green this uh, area is behind me. And again, we're showing you that video of when I first arrived here on the scene. And so again, that was within the last you know, 15, 20 minutes, I would say, uh, that got word right as I was pulling into Rockland, as a matter of fact, and then uh, came straight over here, saw the activity, ran to the back of the apartment complex, and that is when they had him in custody, or at least a person matching uh, the description with the tattoo of him in custody, putting him into that vehicle. Uh, he appeared to have uh, uh, some sort of uh, scrapes and wounds on him, which could have been with the scuffle of them apprehending him and putting him into the vehicle. And then uh, once he was secured in the vehicle, then uh, SWAT team members actually walked along with that uh, vehicle as it started to back out and then leave this complex escorted by another uh, Placer County uh, Sheriff's vehicle. So uh, all of it unfolding here. Again, this is in that green belt right behind these apartments. These are the Edgewood apartments. Uh, and again, it, it was quite the scene as a lot of residents here were out with their phones saying, did they catch him? Did they catch him? Did they catch him? And uh, law enforcement uh, looking clearly uh, satisfied and maybe even relieved that this uh, individual now in custody. Yeah, and Mike, another neighbor that was just talking to Lizay pointed out something that, you know, had he been able to maybe steal a bike or something, he could have got some miles between, you know, the location from where he escaped and an officer. So it's very fortunate that he was staying so close relatively within just about a two to three mile area of where where he walked away from that hospital. Well, and one of the things that they were clearly search, uh, focusing on when this first uh, happened was those bike trail and green belt areas, because as mm -hmm. you can see, uh, it does offer the camouflage, it offers mm -hmm. cover, and especially if you're barefoot, no shirt, wearing you know orange pants, and maybe shackles uh, on, uh, it's all something where you know person's not gonna be traveling very fast unless they have a means to communicate with someone else to be an accomplice. But it appears uh, from this scene at least, uh, right when I arrived here, that he was alone and that he was uh, clearly apprehended by those uh, who spotted him back here. And this is where it all went down very quickly, Lisa. Yeah, and it's scary to think how close he was to all those homes and especially those apartments, you know, where you've got a lot of families and, and children. They've got to be pretty relieved there, Mike. And throughout yesterday, you know, the helicopter is flying overhead and you hear the uh, loudspeaker, the bullhorn saying, you know, mm -hmm. we know you're there. Come out with your hands up. Here's the thing. That helicopter was going from neighborhood to neighborhood announcing the same thing. So it really was a feeling of perhaps they don't know what neighborhood he is in. But this is an area they were over yesterday, uh, not too far from Johnson Spring View Park. If you know where the Dutch Brothers Coffee or the Dutch Bros is yeah. here in uh, Rockland, it's just right around the corner. You take two rights and then uh, you're basically at this apartment complex, which backs up to the green belt here. Uh, and so, you know, it's... It, uh, a lot of activity, a lot of businesses, a lot of apartments, a lot of residents in this area. So a sigh of relief that this is an individual that was apprehended before gained access to getting into someone's residence or car and then getting away further. Well, and, and Mike, and I know you, you've covered this from the beginning, from the, the Mahaney Park incident and, and the shooting death of that, uh, you know, that hostage. Um, this is someone, you know, when you consider the, the charges, he was arrested for the deadly shooting in the hostage situation, and he's charged with attempted murder of an officer and killing a 72-year-old hostage. This is someone, again, facing charges of attempted murder of an officer, so it's it's pretty remarkable that he was being he was able to be taken into custody with no incident because this is someone who clearly you know has no problem you know according to the accusations against him of you know firing at, at officers.
And one of those unknowns in this whole thing, Lee says, you know, he uh, obviously uh, getting out of the hospital, but you don't know, did he equip himself with anything? Was he armed with anything? Right. Did he have any means to try and overpower someone other than just physically uh, once he got out and was on the run? So, uh, you know, I don't know exactly the circumstances of how they found him here and then ultimately apprehended him here and got him to the truck. I got here when they got him to the truck and were putting him in. But very fortunate for those living in this area that it was not a you know regular person like myself or another resident in this area who just happened to come upon him and then had to uh, be confronted by him on the run. Better it be law enforcement and especially those uh, heavily armed and equipped SWAT officers in this area to respond to that and to get this uh, uh, person into custody. Absolutely, and especially because people use the, those trails and they're they're by that creek a lot. You know, it's a heavily recreated area, especially when it's such comfortable temperatures out there. We want to show you a, a map, and Mike, I want to keep you on here of Zion Court, and there you can see that green belt right behind Zion Court that, that Mike is referring to and that he was showing us. And Mike, how long specifically was he in the hospital? Do you know? It was for a little bit, but we don't know why, right? Uh, you know, it was several days ago, and yeah. yeah, they haven't released exactly why he was in the hospital. And mm -hmm. of course, uh, you know, talk among residents here is, is even though the sheriff said there's a lot of questions and there's going to be a full investigation, uh, and they released a statement saying it was clear the deputy wasn't asleep, that suggests they know something about how this person got out of the hospital. So hopefully we'll learn more about that now that they have him back in custody. We can start uh, getting some answers to those questions. But I also want to point out, you were mentioning how a lot of people are out of here. A lot of people walk in this area. Mm -hmm. If you remember, we're not that far from the old Sunset Whitney Golf Course. If you yeah. remember that golf course, that was turned into basically walking paths or biking paths or a place that a lot of people like to walk their dogs. And that's not very far from here. And so, you know, people are active. Johnson Springview is not far from here. That is, of course, a middle school. Uh, it's also got a dog park there and a lot of tennis courts and open fields. So, uh, uh, ultimate frisbee as well so you know people are active around this area and it is quite fortunate that right. where they apprehended this individual again wasn't somewhere where he was confronting unarmed and right. otherwise innocent people just living in this area and uh, I, I can't stress it enough that i uh, just knowing the amount of chatter that was going on as soon as word started getting out that, hey, they may have gotten him, they may have gotten him. Yeah. There's a huge sigh of relief for this mm -hmm. entire community, especially here in Rockland, because if you remember uh, watching our coverage yesterday, the first uh, uh, sign of him being outside the hospital was that ring camera, which is not that far from where we are. In fact, it would make some sense that he would be in this area because it's still that same green belt area. But they were also focusing a lot of their search just on the other side of the freeway, but still in Rockland, off of Rockland Road near Sierra College. So, you know, just the general sense in Rockland was, he's somewhere in Rockland, they can't find him. Yeah. Well, they did. Yeah, 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 it was a pretty unnerving more than 24 hours for all those residents. And I'm also just so thankful that no one was hurt at the hospital when he did escape, you know, that that, you know, there was no confrontation with with any doctors or nurses or other patients or anything like that. So um, a, a lot of positives to take away from this and that um, no one else, you know, ran into him accidentally or, or confronted him. So and that he is now back in custody. Mike Desell, thank you for your hustle and your hard work on this. We appreciate it. In the meantime,